programming already in Late progress. afternoon on number one, Andy Robinson. But a retaliatory jump hook from Ibihi, and they have the lead. It is a good start for the Bulls. They've made four of seven field goals, and they have a five-point lead, and so far they're doing what they need to do against Aaron Gray. Freeze it, freeze it right here. Now, this is what you want to do against Gray. First of all, you want to take him away from the basket. Well, you want to keep your dribble alive so you can shoot the jump shot and drive. That is a formula for success, providing you make that little 10-foot jump shot. And so far, they've been making them, and they've got a five-point lead. That game I mentioned back in 1999, it was December the 7th of 99 when North Carolina was here. The Bulls had a five-point halftime lead but wound up losing by 20-plus. Almost everybody in the country that year lost by 20-plus <laughs> against North Carolina. Cook to the line for his first free throws, a 65% shooter, a transfer from East Carolina. We talked about it in, during the Robert Morris game. He gives them a little bit of a different dimension and a, a forward that they haven't had in the past, a guy that can go to the basket. Well, he does, and especially with this team where they've got a lot of guys that they can, that can shoot it, he's a nice, he provides nice balance for the pit team, and that's why, you know, I pick him to win the Big East championship this year. Into the lineup is number 25, Calvin Betts, a Buffalo native. It be he looks low. And there's a baseline turnaround. Good. Five of eight shooting. That's a great start. Eric Moore, who's averaging over 12, gets his first two. The well, lead is six. I'll tell you what else uh, so far this uh, Buffalo team has done that they haven't done this year is they're taking good care of the ball. Team that averages about 20 turnovers a game has not turned it over yet. Antonio Graves gets the first field goal for anybody but Aaron Gray. Panthers trailing with just over five minutes gone. It's a four-point lead. Biggest lead has been six. The Panthers scored the first two. And nice back door. Boy. Works out well. Robinson finished it off, and he's the fourth bull to score here in the first half. Remember at the shoot-around this morning, we said, boy, if they can execute as well this afternoon against defense, they're going to do a, a decent job. And you know what? They're doing a better-than-decent job. Inside Kendall, but it's deflected out of bounds. Touched last by Parnell Smith. And Benjamin will check in. Ramon checks in. Biggs checks in. Young checks in. Wholesale changes. Wow. That's where you got those nine starters. Now, on this out-of-bounds play, folks, keep your eye on the out-of-bounds plays because they don't put... Buffalo does not put them in on the ball. Nice back door. Excellent. That's the pass you want to use, that bounce pass. And he now, had to call a timeout, and that is a different defense, isn't it, without a man on the ball? Well, I, what I was going to say is watch out. Now, you're playing against some street-smart city kids, and I guarantee you before this game's over, you're liable to see the man taking the ball out of bounds, throw it off a defender's back, have it hit the floor, him pick it up, and lay it in because they've taken the guy completely off the ball, put him in the lane to take away the cutters. And then he goes back and plays the man out of bounds. So watch a little trickery by Pittsburgh eventually. The Bulls, 6 of 9 shooting. They have not turned it over so far. And this is a team, as you mentioned, that averages more than 20 turnovers a game. Yet they do have a winning record and winning 6 of their first 9. Well, they, you know what? I, I, a lot of that's got to do with concentration. And if you can't concentrate playing against the number 2 team in the country, then you can't concentrate, period. Eighth year for Reggie Witherspoon at the helm. 89 and 123, taking his team to the NIT once. The Panthers handle the inbound play. Nice job. Keith Benjamin, one of the veteran players. He's a junior. Shot clock at 10 as they find Kendall, the only starter still in the lineup. Benjamin lines up a three, comes up short. Nice rebound by Betts. Well, you want Benjamin shooting threes. He is not a good percentage three-point three, three point shooter, less than 33. And as a coach, I, don't, I wouldn't let guys shoot if they didn't shoot 33% or better. Smith lost it momentarily, hands it to Robinson. That's a three, and it's good. Aaron Moore with a three. Our star walk playing with tremendous confidence. A 37% three-point shooter, and the Panthers are going to have to talk it over because they've fallen behind by nine thanks to that three. That's a shocking start on the road. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Buffalo certainly has come ready to play, and they believe. 
Here's that last shot, a nice quick release. Plenty of confidence for the sophomore who seems to be getting better. He's starting to knock down the threes, and that's what Buffalo needs. Well, they're a team that shoots under 30% from three-point range. So we talked about it earlier. They're going to have to make some threes during the course of this game. That's right. Taking them is not enough. Not a favorite. So a good start for Eric Moore. He's got five points, a 37% three-point shooter, as I said, and the Panthers will try to regroup now. Ronald Ramon will bring it up. Out there with Biggs, Young, Kendall, the only starter still on the court. For Pitt, hands the ball to Ramon. This is Benjamin. Tries to get inside, can't do it. They cut him off. Real nice man-to-man -man defense, really playing aggressive against the ball and doing a real good job forcing Pittsburgh to run their offense a little bit further away from the hoop. And as the shot clock winds down, the three-point attempt is short. Underneath, a putback attempt draws a foul, and that's Sam Young working hard on the offensive glass. You be foul number 25, Calvin Benson. His first... Shots for Sam, Young. Sam Young, four of six at the line, will go to work. The Panthers trailing by nine. You mean I wasn't good before? <laughs> we we're having a little microphone problem with uh, Mr. Jarvis. We've got that straightened out now. Oh, my mother didn't hear me speaking. Oh, geez. <laughs> One of two is all he can get. He'd be here with a rebound. Another key for today, obviously, is rebounding, especially on the defensive boards for Buffalo, not giving Pittsburgh second shots. That's a three, and it's too strong. But Robinson keeps it alive, goes back up, shoots, and draws a foul. You know, the one thing about a three is, number one, even if you don't make it, long shots equal long rebounds, and sometimes those little quick guards can get to the basketball. And here's a perfect example of a long shot, a long rebound, and usually those rebounds go to the quick. Well, it was one-on-one, -on -one, and Pitts one picked up his first foul. Robinson at the line, shooting two, and he drills the first. 65% foul shooter. There are his season numbers, averaging nine points. A couple of rebounds, a couple of steals. Fedotov checks in. It'd be he goes to the bench for the first time, so... Vadim Fedahov, who went, underwent off-season knee surgery, is now out on the court. And the pair at the line for Andy Robinson. I mentioned Robinson with that career high of 18 against Tulane in a loss. And now Kendall sets. And Gray is back in. Well, Andy Robinson's a young guy that not only uh, is he getting better offensively, but he's one of their best defenders. Uh, he can really defend. Fedotov is playing in front of Gray. Now Benjamin handles for the Panthers. Good, good job defensively. They're really making him extend outside. They're they really are. They're, they're really forcing them to run their offense a lot further away from the basket There's than they normally like to. Good job by Moore. Put the pressure on Ramon. And it is a turnover. Good pressure on the ball. Got that windmill effect going, moving. Of course, he got a little bit of hold there, but that's all right. Get away from those. Get away with that at home. How about Reggie? They call this Reggieville, you know, this alumni arena. Well, I'll tell you what. With what he's doing here, I don't blame them for calling it Reggieville. And he's a Buffalo native, and he was actually coaching at Erie Community College when he got the call to be the interim coach here back in 99, and he's had the job ever since. They took that interim title off of there. Betatov outside. Here's Smith. Drive to the basket, crashes to the floor. Gray has the rebound. Fields with it. And a foul. Benjamin was out of control. But he is fouled. Caught a little bit of a break there, and he also caught a little bit of a knee. He did get, uh, he did get fouled. It is the second foul on Betts. I... It looked to me like it was on 24, not 25, but they gave it to 25. Aaron Gray 
all the way out to handle the inbound. That's what I mean about forcing them to play out so far with the offense. No doubt about it. And that time near, that was a that was a result of them taking the man off the ball, and they really want to try to get a five-second count or a steal on the inbounds pass. Fields gets the basket his first. The lead is eight. It's been as many as ten. Buffalo's got to continue to play the same game. There's another three-pointer by Moore. His second. He's got eight. The lead grows to 11. You know, the dribble handoffs seem to be giving Pitt tonight a little bit of trouble. It's creating some mismatches as Pitt really hedges out against the, the dribble. Inside to Aaron Gray. He traveled. Eric Moore is three for three, and two of those are three-pointers. He has electrified this sellout crowd in Buffalo. It's the Bulls over the Panthers by 11. If you want... Well, about eight and a half gone, and this is the biggest deficit the Panthers have faced all year long. Good three-point shooting so far, especially from Eric Moore. He's been perfect. Well, you know what? If the shooters shoot the threes, you shoot a better percentage. And I think hopefully what Buffalo will learn, maybe from tonight, is you can't have everybody shoot the threes. Just let the guys that really can make them shoot them. It helps. Well, two of five tonight, just 29% on the season. Oh, that is a drastic improvement, and it's something that Mike and I talked about. They're going to have to shoot it well. Well, they are. You can't shoot the ones that you want to shoot. Oh, oh switch by the Panthers now. They're going to go into a zone. Wow. I haven't seen that. Well, Jamie Dixon, and it works to their advantage as Fields comes up with a steal and he races down court dishes inside off the glass and good for the Panthers that is Buffalo's first turnover and the first basket for Tyrell Biggs and they stay in the zone why not it worked the last time stay in it until Buffalo solves it that's the guy that should be shooting the ball primarily for Buffalo at least tonight anyhow from the three Robinson looks low doesn't go there they kick it out. There's another three by Moore. That one comes up short and Fields snatches the rebound. Here comes Pitt on the move. We got Fields and Ramon, a couple of point guards, both out there at the same time, along with Benjamin. That's Biggs. Well, you do. And of course, one of them's a shooter in Ramon. Baseline move by Biggs. He'd be, he comes up with the loose ball, and back come the Bulls. The leading 21 to 12. We are at the midway point in the opening half, and it's been a good 10 minutes for Buffalo. It has, and Pitt's gone back to man to man on his possession here. Fedotov and it'd be, he both playing out there. This is Fedotov, and he got past Gray and scores. Well, one thing about Fedotov is, you know, he's he's that one of those international guys, another guy from Germany, and uh, he's, you know, he's played against some international competition, and he's a pretty rugged, tough kid. Now, you read the quotes of the Buffalo players before the game. They were excited and anxious to go out and play this Pittsburgh team. Gray works his way inside. He has six. The well, lead is still nine. So they figure this is their time to shine this afternoon. Well, you know what? They're one of those teams that's playing in bracket busters Saturday in February. And it's, it, these games, this game right here is huge for them. They show well today. It's going to really help them a lot. Moore gets it down low. A little scoop pass. Fedotov tried to go up with it. It's Ramon coming back. Three on three. Quick move down the lane. Lays it up. Bending off. No good. Rebound goes to Eric Moore. And breaking away is Gamble. Tried to save it, does save it. Can't to the yes, he did. He did save it. Got away with one there. Yeah, Jamie Dixon is all over the official. And rightfully so. I don't think you can throw a pass and get it back yourself. Ramon, the quick three. Off the transition. He is a 50% three-point shooter. And Jamie Dixon is still in the ear of the official. Well, you know, you got to get their attention, especially in a game like this on the road. And I think Dim Jamie, I think he's got his attention because, you know, when he went over the official, uh, he's lucky he didn't get a technical foul. And that rims out. And the rebound is ripped away by Fedotov. So the Bulls get a fresh clock. Levon Kendall set to return. There are riders down here from Canada that cover him. He's a member of the Canadian national team. Kendall. This is Gamble. He 
Behe to the left hand, bending, bending, good. He's got nine points. He does, and I'll tell you what, with his jump hooks and his, his, his quick moves around the basket and the fact that he's a lefty, it makes him a tough matchup. Well, defensively, they have Fedotov on Gray. Smart move. Keep uh, Beatty out of foul trouble. Levance Fields looks inside. Nothing there off the hands of Ramon. Seven and a half to play in the opening half. It's been dominated by Buffalo, and there's a turnover. Wow. I'll tell you what, I haven't seen two palms call in the same game for a long time. How about That's all in Buffalo's half? favor. <laughs> and they're loving it in Buffalo. 25-17, the Bulls over the Panthers. Give them a gift they won't want to return. The Dunkin' Donuts card. Perfect for everyone on your list, no matter who they are. America runs on Dunkin'. Code Red, need to hide. America runs on Dunkin' Lattes. No complicated ordering procedures, just the rich, delicious taste of espresso and steamed milk. They're the lattes for the rest of us. America runs on Dunkin'. Panthers scored the first two of the game. Since then, it's been all Bulls, and they are doing the job outside and inside. That offense they worked on earlier today is clicking. Well, it is, and one of the reasons why it's really been effective is because they've been able to take Gray away from the basket and basically send cutters to the basket. Not only have they been able to catch the ball, but they've been able to score because Gray was outside. We'll see if it continues to work. The Panthers did switch briefly to a zone defense, and they're back in it now, it looks like. Speaking of working, Jamie, work, Jamie is working these officials. It almost looks to me like right now he's saying, you know what, hit me with a tech, get me early, so maybe I can get your attention, and maybe we can get a benefit of a couple of calls that they normally get the benefit of. Back to zone for Pitt. He'd be, he has it. He draws a crowd. That's a three from outside, and another one for Moore. He's made three. He's got 11. Well, the adjustment that Pitt has to make is when they go zone and when they collapse on the ball, they've got to know where number five is. They have not done a good job of identifying where five is. Well, one thing about the zone, you're in a defense you don't really play very often. No, I mean, this is, this is to Buffalo's credit. They've taken Pitt out of what Pitt does as well as anybody in the country, and that is play man-to-man -man defense. This is Graves outside. Cook from the corner. Got it. That's his first field goal, third point for Mike Cook out of Philadelphia by way of East Carolina. And quickly back, Gamble pulls up for a jumper and buries it. Greg Gamble. We are in Buffalo at Alumni Arena on this late Saturday afternoon. A very chilly but sunny Buffalo. Happy to have you along. I'm John Sanders with Mike Jarvis. And the Panthers are being tested in this ballgame. Well, they certainly are. It almost looks like the team that's got Buffalo on the front of their back is playing like Pitt. Graves penetrates the baseline, tried to scoop it to Kendall. It's tapped out of bounds with eight seconds on the shot clock. And Aaron Gray will return. Keep an eye on this out-of-bounds play now, and let's see what happens with, you know, basically against Buffalo, where they don't put a guy on the ball. Are we going to see that off the back play yet? Guess not. And here's Gray. Usually a pretty good answer no matter where he's standing. Oh, yes. Cook down the lane, scoops and scores. The last two baskets by Mike Cook. You see more with 11. He'd be, he is the rebounding leader. They have shared the load with the assists. Doing a nice job moving the basketball and getting it from side to side. He can shoot that 15-foot shot. He's that's, got 11. That's his shot. Probably just inside the three-point circle. Back to the 11-point difference with five and a half to play. The biggest deficit for Pitt this entire season. This is actually good for Pitt. A game like this on the road. Really, really being tested. They're going to have to really play well today. Now they're using a lot of shot clock again. It's a 10. Cook. Fields. That's what you want. You want that jump three, shot. and he got it. That is, that's what you want. If you're Buffalo, you want him shooting the three. But Fields, as we said before, this is a guy that makes big shots. He's 10 of 32 shooting three-pointers, so he's in your 33% range that you like. Good five and scoop. That time by Parnell Smith. 
Parnell Smith is really, really playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. Ten point difference. It's been double figures for the Bulls for a while. Over the top to Gray. See ya. <laughs> you got to have somebody back there helping. Otherwise, it's automatic, of course. Every time that I've seen Pitt this year, whenever they're in trouble, they go to Mr. Gray. And let's see who the foul is on. It could be on Aaron Gray. No, it is not. It's on LeVance Fields. Now here on, on, on this play right here, you see them getting the ball down along the baseline, and what a drive. It almost looked like he was looking to pass it first, and then Parnell flipped it in. Inbounds play. Right to Smith. He's all alone under the basket. A couple of guys are looking at each other on that play. They're not used to giving up layups on out-of-bounds plays. Not that wide open, no. certainly. Really extending the defense. Really forcing Pitt away from the basket. If the NCAA selection committee watches this game, they're going to give this team a lot more uh, uh, credit. That's that is sure. a three-pointer by Antonio Graves. He is a 46% three-point shooter, and he gets a big one there for Pittsburgh. Forced the shot up. Tip try is no good, and Kendall under there for the rebound. Panthers on the move. It's Ramon. Here's Cook down the lane, weaves his way in, leaves it off for Gray, and he buries it. Aaron Gray, Aaron Gray with 10. Well, you know, nobody realizes how difficult those 8 to 10-foot jump shots are. They've got to be perfect. A 10-3 Pittsburgh run. They've cut the lead to 5. They've trailed by as many as 11 at times. Well, this is obviously, these are key, key points in the game for a team like Buffalo. Robinson for 3. Too hard. Cook has the rebound. Kendall runs ahead of him. A little stop and go move, and he takes it all the way down the lane. Kendall there to save it. Ramon for three. No good. Rebound by Parnell Smith. That was a good look at that three. A great look at that three by a great shooter. And now Buffalo, Reggie says, slow it down a little bit. Let's run a little clock. Let's make Pittsburgh play a little bit more defense. And that's what you have to do. Scoring for Pitt. The Behe and Moore have 11 for the Bulls. Moore has the ball. Shot clock at five. We're in the final two and a half minutes. Foul in the basket. Right at the buzzer. How about that? Great job by Robinson. He gets the basket. And he'll have a chance for a three point play. They are on their feet. Panthers in trouble here in the first half at Buffalo. It's 38-31. Nice drive, nice score, and one is coming. It's the Bulls by seven over Pitt. Let's check out our Big East leaders. It's brought to you by Hyundai. And, of course, you talk about rebound leaders. You would expect Aaron Gray to be the head of the pack, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. And uh, how about the guy that's in second? Uh, you loved him last year as a freshman, Jeff Adrian. And uh, Jeff McDermott, I think, is ready to come into his own at Providence as well. And those... Bulls of USF are playing pretty well so far this year. Well, they are, and uh, this is a big year for them. Uh, they basically want to be a team that uh, gains some respect in the Big East and make it to Madison Square Garden for the tournament. Well, that is the goal, of course, because not four of those teams are not going to make it to New York. So that's that's the problem. You don't want to be at the bottom of the pile. No, you don't. That's uh, that 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 leads for a very very short career as a coach. One year, maybe two years, you're probably looking for another job. That's probably right. And four of four at the line for the Bulls. They have not missed a free throw. Now, if Buffalo can get it above 10. They're sort of showing zone, but they're not really playing zone. Watch what happens when the cutter goes through. They'll go with them man to man. Aaron Gray comes outside with Kendall. Now a drive and a runner by Fields is good. He bangs it home. Boy, is he good 
shooting that ball off the drive, way up off the glass. I mean, he learned that in the playgrounds back in New York. There's no doubt about it. Well, and you talked about him being the kind of guy, and he's done it here in the first half. Yes. When the Panthers needed something, he stepped up. He makes big shots. He beat he from outside. That's a three. Speaking of big shots. He's got 14 first half points. What a confident kid he is, huh? Buffalo's once again extending that defense. Really putting the pressure on Pitt. Gray's turnaround rattles in and out. Put back by Kendall. That won't go. That was a lid on it at that end. Yes. <laughs> this way you gotta be patient, Buffalo. They've had three different 11-point leads and a chance to get another one right here if they can get two. You know, it looks like when it, when it be he hands off on that dribble handoff, he's open. That was in and out. He's open for possibly a pass back after he hands off. Now that time the three-pointer did not work. He be he back to the defensive end. Fields will march it up. We're in the final minute. The first half that's been dominated by the Bulls. There's a drive and a basket. Antonio Graves has seven points. The senior from Mansfield, Ohio. Seven point difference as we head toward halftime. Good and use of a timeout. You have to use it or lose it, and that's what they decided and, to and do. And you know what? You, you got to use it. You got 33 seconds left. There's 31 on the shot clock. So you run this thing down. You get a last shot. You know what? If you get a three here, you go in by 10 up at halftime. Well, the three-pointer has been very good for Buffalo. They are four for ten shooting the threes, and they've had some big ones. Eric Moore has three of them, and that one is number four by Kidbihi. And you know, four for ten, 40 percent from the three-point line is the same as 60 percent from the two-point line. So anytime you're shooting above 33, it's to your advantage. Today's game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. The other part of the story here, we hardly expected this. The Bulls have turned it over one time. One time and that's I mean that that that's phenomenal in of itself but against Pittsburgh I mean it just doesn't happen very often and that was at the 11 8 mark so they have played good and strong you said they needed to take care of the basketball and Eric Moore has done that plus he shot it very well making three three pointers and they're going to use up all the clock they can the rotation out in front they create some nice mismatches with those dribble handoffs and uh, look for them to maybe post up the guy that hands off, especially the big guys. No bonus either. Neither team in foul trouble. It's been a quick first half. There's the three. Bending no good, and they're rebound by Kendall. Shot clock is about to go. Ramon flings it down the court. Well, we have played the first 20 minutes of basketball. And it is the first time that the Panthers have been in trouble at halftime. They are down to seven. A very well-played first half by the Bulls of the University at Buffalo. Now the Panthers trailing Mike by their biggest deficit so far this year. But what are they going to talk about at halftime? Talk, what's the Panthers going to talk about or what Pitt's going to talk about? I think the Panthers, basically, the Bulls are going to just say, hey, look, guys, let's just try to play another half. 20 more minutes taking care of the basketball. If you're Pitt, you got to keep getting the ball into Mr. Gray. We're at halftime. We'll start our halftime activities from Alumni Arena right after this. I'm a Mecca Okafor, college graduate, Charlotte Bobcat, and proud recipient of the Aeropostale Big E Scholar Athlete of the Year. Graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years, I balance books and basketball. Aeropostale gives out more than $300,000 in scholarships to both students and student athletes. It wasn't and still isn't all about the rebounds. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Outlander. Out everything. Everything. I was walking down the street. I saw the poster. If you're... 
With I.O. en Español, I can enjoy the best channels in Spanish. Mis películas. My news. My cartoons. Ay, mis novelas. My sports. Padrísimo. It's here. I.O. en Español, with more than 30 channels in Spanish, like Discovery Channel en Español, Super Canal Caribe, ESPN Deportes, History Channel en Español, and many others. Just call 866-443-9297. My I.O. en Español. Mr. Lynch, it looks like you'll be able to save over $13,000 in interest payments with Credit Guard of America. Credit Guard of America is a nonprofit credit counseling company. We're here to help you solve your credit problems and meet your financial goals. If you are at least $3,000 in debt and behind in your payment, we can help you. So call a toll-free number right now. Our certified credit counselors are standing by to... Well being played right now at halftime, but the Bulls have surprised the Panthers. It's 42-35, and they had three different 11-point leads in the first half. Let's update the Big East Conference basketball standings. Of course, you can look at all of these numbers, Mike, and they're all very good. The conference is very good in non-conference play. But some of those numbers will change come early January when we begin conference play. Those numbers will change drastically. I mean, all, all of a sudden, everybody starts beating up on everybody each other and that's the top group and even down at the bottom and the big east you've only got rutgers the only team that's under 500 so far well you do and they just haven't found a way to make up for the loss of uh, quincy Duby. well let's find out who mike jarvis thinks is going to be the king of the hill when all is said and done here are your <laughs> picks for the big east well i'll tell you what i don't know if i'd have i might stick with this but i'm gonna i think pittsburgh in the end is going to win it because of their balance because of aaron gray and the fact that they play defense however However, Marquette is an awfully dangerous team with the three-man backcourt that they got. And, of course, Villanova and Connecticut, they all they do is know how to win. My sleeper team for the year is Mike Gray's Notre Dame team. Well, it would be only just that Mike wins some of those close games. Huh? He's had a tough time. There's the rest of the pack, and you can see South Florida, Seton Hall down toward the bottom. Uh, you've got West Virginia ranked higher than maybe some people would have thought since they had to redo that team. Well, I do, and that's because of Coach Beeline and because of the system that they played. See, teams like West Virginia and Georgetown are very different than the other teams, and that can really be to your advantage when you're in a league like the Big East. Well, let's talk about individually. Who do you see at the head of the pack? Well, I'll tell you what, I love, okay, Dominic James. I mean, I just think that he is, you know, is just such a great point guard, such a great leader, a young man of, in, I mean, just incredible character. And uh, he also, I mean, anytime you got a point guard that you can run alley-oop plays for, you got somebody special. I think he's maybe as good as any point guard in the country, and we know what a difference they make. Well, we have more coming up. We'll continue our halftime activities from Buffalo, New York. The Bulls are surprising the Panthers at halftime. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It runs on Dunkin' Lattes. No complicated ordering. Welcome back to Buffalo. We're at halftime. The second-ranked Pitt Panthers taking on the Buffalo Bulls here in Buffalo, New York. And our Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Let's take a closer look at Pittsburgh's head coach, Jamie Dixon, and all he's done in his four years is win, Mike. Well, I'll tell you what, he wins because he's a great teacher. He gets people of, of high character, gets them to buy into the Pittsburgh system, which is team. And he has done a great job. The numbers do not lie. Jamie Dixon, this Big East Coaches Spotlight has been brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Oppenheimer Funds is proud to be the official mutual funds of the Big East Conference. We've got a lot more coming up. We'll continue with halftime. We'll check out some stats and highlights when we return to Buffalo. Stay with us. Forty two thirty five is the score. We welcome you back to Alumni Arena along with Mike Jarvis. I'm John Sanders. And would you believe it in a college basketball game? We had a little discrepancy in the stats at halftime. They had one guy who made a free throw. They didn't give it to him. They gave it to another guy who didn't have a free throw. But we think the score is right. It's a seven point difference. And it's been a good half for the Bulls. It has been a great half for the Bulls. Anytime you get 14 assists to one turnover, you're supposed to be winning, even if it's against the number two team in the country. Well, 
they are winning. Let's check out some of the highlights from the opening 20 minutes here. And it's been a good 20 minutes, as we say, for the Bulls. They've been especially good in shooting the long shots. Well, you know what happens when you make them early, then it gives you a lot of confidence. And Mr. Moore was making them early, and he was making them often, and that really helps. And uh, they, they've been going to the right guys for the three-point shot tonight. There's another one. I mean, he just like he's, he's really feeling it tonight. And they were getting him the basketball, and even the big man coming outside. He had a great first half with 14 points, moving closer to number 11 all-time in scoring. Statistically, Pittsburgh's shooting is not bad. Buffalo's is better. Three-point-wise, just one different, but look at that turnover situation. Well, the turnovers, I mean, neither team has done, I mean, both teams have done a great job with the ball. It's just that Buffalo has done an even better job. One turnover. That's how it looked, highlight and stat-wise. We've got another 20 minutes to play. Can number two Pitt come back? We're going to find out when we come back. This 42-35 at halftime, the Bulls in front, and this is a position the Panthers have not been in so far this year. This game reminds me of a first-round game in the NCAA tournament, 15 seed versus 2 seed. Everybody in the arena rooting for the 15 seed. This is a great test for Pittsburgh. First time they've been behind at halftime, and we were concerned about the poor shooting of Reggie's team, but that has not been a factor. They've shot it very well so far. Well, they must have. They must have. They must have thought he was Reggie, the guy who used to play for Indiana. And uh, I tell you what, they're shooting the ball really well, and I think it's because the right guys are shooting the ball today. Panthers had a lead just once. They were up two to nothing. He'd be. He is outside. He brought Kendall with him. That dribble handoff action has really given Pittsburgh a little bit of problem. And that's that short shot they've gotten as a result. The second field goal for Greg Gamble. So Gamble stretches the lead to nine. You know what happens in games like this, uh, uh, John, is that teams, the opposing teams, teams that Pittsburgh will play in the future, they'll take a couple of cues from what Buffalo's doing tonight. So look for a few more teams to maybe run some of that same action. Cook will shoot two. It's the second foul on Andy Robinson. Robinson, a great defensive player, yes. as you mentioned, came in with 19 steals. Well, you know what? Most of the time, the great defensive players, and yes, he did get them on the elbow, uh, that, be, that uh, guys that get a lot of steals, they're not necessarily great defensive players, but this guy gets steals and he defends the dribble as well. Six points for the transfer. And the 42-point output in the first half is the most for the Bulls this year. Right now, the lead is seven. Three different times in the first half. The Buffalo led by 11. That three won't go. Tipped up and pulled down by Aaron Gray. There's the big size of the big man. Yes, and you know, it's not like how high he jumps. He just gets great position. And as Fields was attempting to make a move against Moore, he drew, drew the foul. It'll be the first on Eric. We had 11 points in the first half, right behind Ibihi's 14. The Panthers are led by Aaron Gray with 10, the only Panther in double figures, and he's got the ball right now. Well, the biggest thing that I think Buffalo has to worry about uh, as, uh, as much as anything else is whether or not they can just sustain it for the 40 minutes if those legs can, can withstand. Loose ball, cooked up, bending off, tipped up no good, tipped up again, and finally... Well, they let him play inside, didn't yeah, they? Yes, looks like a Big East game, doesn't it? Racing down, and the shot is blocked. Back oh. the other way, somehow, Robinson got it up and in. That was a great move, going in against the big guy, using his body. Looked well, like three consecutive fouls, it did. no calls. It really looked like a Big East game on that one. It looked like we had fouls at both ends. I guarantee you that. We did, <laughs> trust me. Aaron Gray. Leans in and draws the foul. That will be the first. Now watch this. Watch this hoop here. Contact, not for a foul, and then contact again. Now the contact there was actually created by the offensive yeah. player. That was probably a charge. It probably was. However, Gray, he's like a big oak. He's not going down. And he nails his first free throw. 11 points for him. A great play by Robinson. If they let him play that way, it will be 
typical of the Big East. Yes, it will. Cook has the rebound. A little bit of contact yeah, here he, as well. <laughs> he thought he was fouled, and Jamie Dixon <laughs> thought he was fouled. Almost stolen, but kept alive by Kendall. You know what's so amazing? It's not often that you see a Big East coach asking the referee to call a game a little bit closer. Inside is Aaron Gray. Once, twice, no basket. What are we going to call here? Here's a danger zone for Buffalo. Two quick fouls. Both of them early here in the second half. And they'll keep pounding it in and pounding it in, I guarantee you. All alone is Kendall off the feed from Gray. First basket for Levon. Six-point game now. It was seven at halftime. Here's that dribble handoff action and then the post up. Smith outside, hands it off. He'd be he almost had it stolen that time by Graves. On the drive and a foul. Great, great body control. I want to see that one again, and I think we're going to see it once again. You notice the mismatch. He takes him off the dribble and draws the foul. That's the second time that uh, Levon has got basically either beside the guy or behind him. Convert the free throw. Got to make those. Got to got to get those three-point plays. Panthers back at the offensive end, down by eight. And this crowd has been on its feet from the beginning. Here comes Graves. Gives up to Fields. Now Cook. 15 on the shot clock. Inside Gray. He be backs down. Spinning, shooting, scoring. Boy, he is he has become automatic, hasn't he? He is in. He just gets better and better every single game. And the tougher the game gets, the tougher he gets. Back to that six-point deficit. Ibihi with a miss. Is that long rebound for the quick for the quick guy? Gamble brought it out. Tries to go to Moore. And done. No call by the referee that time. No Moore backs away. Now they kick it to the baseline, and there's another drive inside. And Aaron Gray with a block. Loose ball. And Bulls will keep it. Well, you know, one thing that, that Buffalo is doing is when they attack the basket, they are attacking the man. They're getting their bodies into the big guy, as you can see right here. No foul call, but that's okay. They're doing what they're supposed to do and what their coach wants them to do. That's the only way you can beat those big guys. Robinson off the screen will shoot from outside. And the ball loose, and everybody's going to have a hand in this one. This but again, Buffalo has got to slow down a little it. bit. Nice back door. He missed the shot. And the rebound. Let the though. offensive rebound and a foul on Gray. Well, that's good hustle by Robinson. Well, that's quickness. That's that's just being quicker to the basketball, which you'll see here. Once again, it's the back door off the fake dribble handoff. Miss layup, miss layup, but quick rebound, and guess what? You get fouled. So you might end up, if you get two points here, you're probably better off than if you made the layup because you get another foul on Gray. If I, second. if I seem like I'm a little excited, it's because I am. <laughs> this is quite a game, and I'll tell you what, it's a great game to watch and a great atmosphere, and you got to give these Buffalo kids all the credit in the world. Absolutely. Playing in the MAC conference, a conference that traditionally gets just one team in no matter what. And they keep it alive again. No matter what. You're absolutely correct. Games like this, however, will make people think later in the year. And this is a bracket buster team. This is a dangerous team. He'd be he to the left hand, doesn't get the roll, but there's another offensive rebound. The putback is no good, and this time Gray takes charge. They are just right now a lot quicker to the ball than Pittsburgh is. Knocked out of bounds. These Buffalo fans are on their feet. They're excited. About four and a half gone in the second half, and they've still got a seven-point lead over the number two team in the country. <laughs> Those Bulls fans spent the night outside in the cold waiting to get the tickets to get in, and they came in early. There was wrestling here starting at about 11 o'clock this morning, and so they've been up there since 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you what, if I was out there all night, I think I'd come in to watch a wrestling match, too. Well, capacity here is 6,100, and they've got over 6,300, so there are some areas, obviously, where people are standing and watching. Oh, and it's they're a, getting their money's worth. A great atmosphere for a basketball game. Make no mistake about it.
Bowles will bring it up. You see, the turnover situation has just been zero practically for Buffalo, and that's hard to believe for a team averaging 20 a game. You see, he against Gray leans in with the right hand, missed the shot. Now there's another offensive rebound. board. Gamble got that one. They're just quicker right now to everything. Quicker. Quickness, quickness, quickness. Here's Robinson. Little stop and go move. Pushes it up and in. I think he, I think he was watching LeVance. That's his move. It's 51-42. Five minutes gone in the second half. Wow. You know, when you get those kinds of bounces, you got a wide open post guy down low. And there's a turnover just the second as they strip it away from Abihi. Great hands on Here comes Cook. And he'll go to the line. Got to finish those. Yeah, that's guys. right. If you're if you're Jamie Dixon, that ball's got to go in. Yeah, you got to finish those. I mean, this, this game's going to be tough enough to win as it in. Nice move. Got to finish. And now you got to definitely better make the two free throws. Well, he's only two of five, or excuse me, three of five at the foul line. Seven points for Mike. And he got the roll on number two. And you know, the longer this game stays like it is in terms of that clock going away and Buffalo being up, if they can get into the last two or three minutes of the game, you could see an incredible upset here. Pitt's doing a lot better job defending the back door this half, though. But from outside, that one won't go. The rebound to Fields. Once again, the right guy's got to shoot the ball. Pushing against Moore, reverses. Still has his dribble going. And tried to kick it away. It's taken away. A little three on two here. You'll see the old bounce pass. What wow. a shot. Unbelievable. You think it's going the Bulls' way? Every, everything is going their way. And that's what happens on an upset Saturday. Gamble with an amazing shot, and they are up 10. Incredible. First double digit lead in the second half. They were up by 11 four different times in the first half. Gray has his shot blocked. Nice job by Abihi to stay between Gray and the bat and, and contest that shot. And both teams, by the way, take great pride in contesting shots when they're on defense. Kendall will check back in for Pitt. The Panthers in trouble on the road. Just their second road game of the year. Trying to go 10-0 for the fifth consecutive year. That three bends off. Not a very good looking shot. That is not his shot. And you know, he really should, Rob, Mr. Robinson should not be shooting threes. Not if they want to win this game. This is Cook with it. They go inside to Gray. And rightfully so, you got that one on one. Works his way around but missed the shot. Cook keeps it alive for Pitt. He goes inside, misses the rebound by Parnell Smith. Now, Pitt seems to me, now you tell me if I'm wrong, doesn't seem like they're rushing a yes. little bit right now. They might be starting to get a little bit tight. You know, the Panthers set to bring in a whole bunch of subs right here as Jamie tries to come up with a combination to turn it around. As we near the 12 and a half minute mark, he'd be, he will hand it off to Robinson. They go to Smith down low, throw it away. A couple of turnovers rearing the ugly heads for the Bulls. Well, that's probably because they're getting uh, they're getting tired, and this is why what Jamie's trying to do is trying to wear them down with the substitution. Here's that little has that fast break, but what a great great move at the end. And somehow he got it up and somehow. in. Well, Pittsman missing the short ones at their end of the court, and the Bulls have been making yes, theirs. Yes, they have. That's one of the differences in this game. 22 of 46 shooting, and there's penetration in a basket. The first point of the game for Benjamin. Well, keep an eye on bench points now from here on in. Uh, that's fresh legs versus tired legs. And that's where the advantage right now is going to Pitt. And if Pitt can get this thing, yeah, they're, they're still in great shape, to be honest with you, with the amount of time this He'd be, he works his way inside and throws it away. Getting tired. Ramon, up, bending off, no good, tipped out controlled by the Bulls. These two teams are racing up and down a little bit right now. They are, and that's the Pitt's advantage, I believe. 
Buffalo just does not have as many weapons. They've got to continue to play a smart game. Loose ball, and it's another turnover. I don't know how many timeouts Reggie has, but he may want to start using a few just to give his guys a rest. Of course, it's a lot easier for me to say that. Well, that's four turnovers in the second half alone, but they've still got a 53-45 lead. We're in Buffalo, New York, and the Bulls on top, 11-32 to play. 53-45, you mentioned the bench scoring. Pitt's bench has outscored the opposition in eight of the nine games so far this year. But these folks here in Buffalo, that doesn't seem to bother them. Look at the attendance, 6,350, third largest crowd here. And the Panthers are outscoring the bench 8-2 to two today. That's because they've only used, Buffalo's only used two players off their bench. That's correct. Most teams, that's all they can use. But don't forget, these 6,000 people are giving uh, Buffalo all the bench that they need. Biggs gets it across. Now Ramon inside. Kendall from the corner. It's Benjamin. Good. That's a three. Benjamin's second field goal in the second half, and he has pulled the Panthers back in this ball game. Down now by five again at the 11-minute mark. Those fresh legs make all the difference in the world. Well, it is Calvin Betts now who has played off the bench along with Vadim Fedotov. Those have been the only two subs. Everybody else has gone all the way, and Fedotov and Betts are on the court right now. Shot clock at 10. Almost knocked away. This is the guy you want to have the ball. And he'll shoot the three. Comes up well short. Somebody might have got a piece of that when it goes out of bounds. It belongs to Pittsburgh, but I might be overruled here. Well, even if it is, there's only two seconds left on the shot clock. It will be Pitt basketball. Reggie can't believe it. And look at Jamie. He has been in the face of the officials the entire afternoon. Yeah, it looked like a looked like a questionable call, but then again, you know, this time it favored Pitt. They've, they've got the benefit of most of the calls this afternoon, so I don't think Buffalo has a lot to complain about. Buffalo sticking with the man-to-man. -man. Why not? It's got you a five-point lead with ten to go against the number two team in the country. Tell you what, they had a backdoor play. Pitt did that time, and they didn't see it, but Graves does it on his own. Nine points for Antonio Graves, and all of a sudden it's a three-point well, game. Well, it is, and what you're seeing here is you're seeing nine against six, and you're seeing fresh legs against tired legs. He Buffalo needs, hands it off. Buffalo needs somebody to come up big, and it's probably got to be this guy, number five. Mr. Moore. Benatov is outside. This is Betts. And with ten on the shot clock, that's an air ball. And the Panthers come out of there. And you can tell that's a tired shot, isn't it? Well, it's a tired shot. It's also a, a much more determined Pittsburgh team. They've really turned up the defense on after the last substitutions that they've made. Once again, fresh legs can help you do that. Graves out to get it on another drive. He's sandwiched and fouled. Well, Mr. Betts, I think uh, Kelvin Betts, 25, is doing what he's supposed to do, and that is force the ball to the baseline. However, you got to get some weak, you got to get some help from the weak side. That is the third foul on Betts. Heralded high school player from this area, recruited by Florida. And the Panthers, as a team, not overly good from the foul line. They're right about 70 percent. Graves shooting just 63 percent, and. In that victory at Auburn, when they had the big lead, they really couldn't finish them off because they didn't shoot their free throws coming down the stretch. They're going to have to make them today. They've cut the lead down to two and one. So it's 11 points and a 9-0 hit run. And you know they did this. They, they made this run with Gray on the bench, and they did it with the defense and driving the ball to the basket. Here's more from outside. That's a three. That was huge. Big difference between one and giving Pitt a chance to go up and being up by four. This would be a great time for Buffalo, I think, to take a look at a little bit of zone. It is 14 points for Eric Moore and his fourth three-pointer. Here's Graves. He'll stop and go move. Looks to Kendall. Has it stripped away by wow. Fedotov. Buffalo's got to continue to just play smart, 
Take care of the basketball. Basketball. Don't rush if you want to pull this upset off. Campbell with it to Robinson. Back again to Moore. This is Fedotov outside. There's the handoff. We've seen it over and over. And Robinson will shoot. Kicks up high on the rim. And the possession arrow is going to keep it at this end of the court. You know, with Robinson, uh, it looks like, you know, he's wide open. They're not really playing him. And there's a perfect example of a guy that could probably get a shot from inside the three-point circle, and he doesn't always have to take it from outside the three. He'd have a much better chance of getting not only the, sh the ball to go in, but also possibly to get a rebound. Biggs out as Gray is back for the Panthers. And they finally get it into Robinson. Robinson Dangerous with a battle. dozen. Gamble, no place to go. And a timeout called. Good call. Reggie was standing right there, saw his player in trouble, said call a timeout. The lead has been as many as 11, and right now it's four for Buffalo. Three elbow in. The best coach I ever had was my dad. Practice. 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 He taught me that the fundamentals, together with hard work, make anything possible. And now it's time to teach others what my dad taught me. Introducing Steve Nash's MVP Basketball, the only DVD program that makes back-to-back -back MVP Steve Nash your personal coach. You'll learn Steve's fundamental training secrets to give you a competitive edge on the court. I don't think there's anybody in the NBA that does it any better than Steve Nash. What an opportunity to have Steve Nash as your child's personal coach. This program is about the fundamentals of basketball, and Steve Nash knows the fundamentals of basketball. Order two-time MVP Steve Nash's MVP basketball program for the low introductory price of only $29.95. Act now and you'll receive a second DVD, Steve's Team Play and Practice Organization. Perfect for the parent coach, absolutely free. But it's not available in stores, so you must act now. Within one and one reason after a nearly flawless first half, some mistakes by the Bulls. Well, what's happening with the Bulls is they've started to lose some of their legs. They've gotten a little bit tired, and th that's causing the turnovers. And, of course, at the same time, Pittsburgh has really turned up the heat on defense as they substitute three and four guys at a time. It's Fields, Ramon, Graves, Kendall, and Gray for the Panthers. Fedotov is out there along with Moore. He'd be he. And there at the bottom, you can see the matchup between Moore and the big man, Aaron Gray, and they have not disappointed. Gamble is on there, and of course, Robinson as well. This is Fedotov playing their two big guys at the same time. He, he turns, shoots, missed the shot. That's fatigue. That shot probably would have gone in early. He's tired. He's, and of course, if you had to cover Aaron Gray or play against him all night, you'd be tired too. And that foul is on Fedotov. It has been very physical underneath, but Fedotov will pick up the foul. That is his first. The lead is four. A couple of free throws coming up for Pittsburgh. 52, and throughout most of this game, after the first minute and a half, two and a half minutes actually, it's been all Buffalo. They played well. And this shows the hustle that we've seen as you take a look at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. Well, anytime you, you got a plus nine advantage on second chance points, that's all about hustle, as you said. That's all about wanting the ball a little bit more than the opposition. Aaron Gray will go to the line. He's got 13 points. He leads his team in scoring. Antonio Graves has 11. Aaron Gray with eight rebounds. And he gets the roll on number one. And he had those minutes on the bench where he could get a little rest. And I look for Pittsburgh to now just keep pounding it into him every time down. High rebound. He beat. He has it as Gray makes one of two. And we got a three-point game inside eight minutes. We're at Alumni Arena on the campus of the University at Buffalo. I'm John Sanders along with Mike Jarvis. And we have had a dandy here so far this afternoon. It's been Buffalo in front almost all the way. Yes, we have, John. We've had a great game. Finally get it in the hands of Gamble. Shot clock again winding down to 10. That's okay. Gamble in the lane. He'd be, he decides to throw it to his teammate, and he throws it right to Pitt. 
And we got a one possession game right now with Ramon in the game. That means one shot. Of course, this is where you want to just go inside to Gray. Get three the old-fashioned way. Instead, it's Kendall. And Gray, with his rebound number nine, goes back to his teammate who scores. It's a one-point game again. <laughs> Jamie, forget about it. You're not getting any of those calls. Not today. Not here. You're going to have to win it by, your, by yourself. See the difference in the turnovers. First half to second half. It's been a complete reversal. Petitov hands it off. He has not scored in the second half. Mike he has 14 not. in the first. No, I just think he's run out of gas, uh, to be honest with you. Robinson with it. Again, the shot clock inside 10. He got it off and wow. right in. <laughs> as soon as we said that, what an unorthodox shot, but a big, big basket. Once again, still a one possession game. And Jamie Dixon continues to work the officials. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do any good today, though. Ramon for three. Comes up short. Good position for Ibidi on the rebound. And a great shot for Pittsburgh. That's the guy, if anybody's going to shoot it for you from the outside, you want it to be Ramon. Six minutes to go. Fields almost a reach-in foul. He'd be, he hands it off, and we've seen him run this offense the entire game. And very well. It creates a lot of mismatches. Kendall knocks it away. Another turnover. Yes, being a little careless right now with the basketball. Ramon wants it. Inside Gray. Up. Good and foul. You know, all year long, people say, well, who's going to be your go-to guy? You've heard this, right? They keep asking, who's going to be the go-to guy for Pitt? Usually it's a guy with Pittsburgh. It's this guy, the big horse inside. He knows how to get it done and does. So Gray will go to the line for the chance to tie the ball game. Remember, Pitt scored the first two points, but then fell behind 4-2, to two, and they cannot tie it. They've got to tie it, obviously. If they, if they can tie it to get ahead, it turns the whole game around into their favor. But it's still the lead for the Bulls. He be he again, hands it off to Gamble. What a great game, though. There's a steal by Fields, and Pitt is going to take the lead. Well, another turnover is costly to the Bulls. Yes, it is. 59-58, the Panthers on top. First time since they got the first two. Nice back back door, door and a block. They've done a great job today. I, I don't think I've seen any team get that many backdoor passes against Pittsburgh. Nice job. Good recovery there. I think Levance Fields took one in the chops. <laughs> That's right. He'll take it any time as long as this team gets the ball. He's about winning, that guy is. Maybe a little question about what the clock should be as far as the shot clock is concerned. The game clock's at 5.01. Pittsburgh is up by a point. And one of the officials coming over, Lamont Simpson, to talk to the scorer's table. And then he's now joined by Mike Foote. You know, if before the game you had said, hey, listen, Mike, um, how about a one-point game? with five minutes to go. What do you think? You probably said that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's been a, it's really been a fun afternoon. And, uh, it, you know, I don't think anybody in this house, 6,300 folks, have been disappointed one bit. They've got to be very proud of their team. The Bulls have played great. And they've got the ball, and they're down by just one. Robinson off the inbound play. Graves gets him in the corner. And Graves falls down. He be he. Puts up a shot. Good. Oh, a two clutch baskets. I was just going to say, two huge baskets. And I guess as long as you're up, you got a chance of winning, right? Big possession here for both teams. One on offense, obviously, the other one on defense. On the drive, Kendall. And he'll go to the line. Leave on Kendall. Went hard, drew the foul. It's number two on Gamble. And Kendall with a chance now to put Pitt back on top again. Give us another lead chain. Two shots for Levon and Kendall. Free throws and inside baskets are usually the difference in a basketball game. Team that can make their free throws and make tough baskets around the basket. 
Kendall's first chance at the line. He has five points on the afternoon. Did not score in the first half. A red shirt senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. And you see uh, Jamie going for a little bit more defense here. At least quickness outside, taking out Gray, putting in Biggs. You'll see Gray go back in as soon as, uh, probably as soon as Pittsburgh gets the ball back and there's a little stop in the action. Now what can Buffalo do now that they've seen that lead finally go away? Well, they, what they got to do now is just be a little patient and once again get back to taking care of the ball. It's a foul on the way up. But it's not a shooting foul. Once the player hears that whistle, you got to throw that ball up toward the basket. If he did, he's shooting three free throws. But he did not. He did not. And the foul is on Kendall. Let's see. Let's see that play again. See, once again, you throw that up to the rim, not to your teammate, and you're going to the line for three. Robinson out in front. Backs away from Antonio Gray. Here's the guy. He has got to make something happen. He looks a little, he looks a little tired. And Jamie came out of his shoes on that play. Thought it was a turnover. He beat him for three. Scramble for the rebound. Panthers get it. Well, I think only because twice earlier in the game that, you know, palming was called against Pitt. So you expect it to go the other way when it occurs. You think that was more obvious than the ones in the first half? I thought so, yes. That was very obvious. But once again, when you're on the road, things that are obvious doesn't matter. Great mismatch here for Pittsburgh. And that's and a, that's a hold right there. Yes. Eric Moore with a grab. It'll take us to a break. I'll tell you what, Jamie Dixon spent about as much time on the court as his players. <laughs> he has been all over the place. Well, he his has. Panthers are in the lead. has been brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. Start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-AMEX. And by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. That is downtown Buffalo. We're a little north of there. We're on the campus of the University at Buffalo. And talk about Jamie Dixon being active. He's been on the court. He had a real good teacher. He's been watching Jim Calhoun for a lot of years. <laughs> Forget about the coach's box. <laughs> what coach's box? <laughs> You're right. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. This game is far from over. Mike Cook barely got it to go. He's looking for his 10th point of the game and gets them both. But you know what? Speaking of Jamie, though, as much as he's been on the officials, he has not been on his own kids. He's been very calm, cool, and collective with the Pittsburgh team. That's with the exception of probably what happened in the, in the locker room at halftime. <laughs> exactly. Now, this is the biggest lead the Panthers have had. Blocked inside and a foul call. Parnell Smith worked his way inside. It's number three on Aaron Gray. Both he and Kendall have three fouls. Well, what he does here is he uses his quickness, spinning inside, and yes, he did get fouled. Yeah, when you come down with that hand, right. it's going to be a foul. And Gray doesn't usually come down with his hand. Uh, he's usually big and strong and just stays up there. And that's what you got to do when you're a big guy and the guy, the guy gets that close to the basket. Just hold your ground. Just the second chance at the line for Smith, a 77% shooter coming in, and he rolls the first one home. Nice follow through and extension. Got the roll. This one will be a swish. Watch. Usually that's what happens after the first one rolls in like that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. There you are. How you like that, huh? He's got double figures. Smith with 10. Back to a one-point game. Three to play. Don't leave us. This has been a damn. Oh, it's been beautiful. It's what it's all about. College basketball on the road. Number two team in the country. There is not a student in Buffalo Blue who's sitting. I guarantee you that. No. And hopefully they'll all be back in class on Monday. Well, they haven't been sitting since the game started. Can't blame them. Fields over the top to Gray. Nice. That's knowing, knowing each other. Those plays don't happen by accident. 
Aaron Gray with 18. They try to answer Great and do. Oh, right boy. back at you. Parnell Smith with a dozen. If you can do it, I can do it. 65-64. Oh, beautiful. This is fun. I'll tell you, I'm enjoying this. Levance Fields. To Graves. Cook on a drive. Inside and foul. Well, you know what Pitt has done really, really well in this last eight minutes of the game is you just attack in the basket, whether it's by the pass or by the dribble, as you see here with Cook. They're really getting to the basket. Cook and Graves and all the Pittsburgh guys. And then, of course, getting into the big guy and then try to get three the old-fashioned way. Well, it doesn't matter shooting or not. Both teams are going to be in the double bonus the rest of the way. This is the tenth chance at the line for Cook. He's made seven of nine. And I know that's got to make Jamie very, very happy, him attacking the glass the way he is. A dozen for Cook. And the Panthers have some fouls to give because they've only been charged with four. I misread that. I thought it was nine. It's four. Nice up and under. But he missed the shot. The rebound. Scrap for it underneath and a foul. With a minute 47 to play. Two coming up for the Bulls. And it's number four on Levon Kendall. And you know, a lot of the dribble handoffs and the action that Buffalo does away from the ball makes it very difficult for the defensive team to get a body on a guy. And that's why I think they're getting offensive rebounds today. It's not that they don't want to block out, but they're having a difficult try time locating the man to block out. Well, you saw the graphic. They have never beaten a ranked opponent. This would be something if you knock off number two in your oh. own house. Oh, boy. Missed number two. A rebound number yes. ten for Gray. So another double-double for Aaron Gray. That's become automatic for him. Big possession here for both teams. Final minute and a half. All the way out. Still 15 on the shot clock and time. Called by the Panthers. It is a 30-second timeout. And so you know, it's a two-point game with yeah. less than a minute and a half to go. Well, once again, you, you know, you want to call the timeout. You've got them to use. You want to make sure you run a play. And I guarantee you when they come back in, the play's either going to be isolation drive on one side or pumping into gray on the other side. And the beautiful thing about doing that is you now have the best of both worlds. You've got the open side to drive. You've got gray on the weak side to rebound. So either way, you've got a pretty good chance of scoring against this team right now that has doesn't have a whole lot of legs left. Let's take a look at our game-changing performance brought to you by Pontiac, and maybe some of that fatigue led to some turnovers that helped turn it around. I think it did. There's a pretty good example right there of, of a cross-court pass and a very alert defender that time in the case of LeVance Fields. That gave him the lead, and that game-changing performance is brought to you by Pontiac. Fields will shoot a three. Short. Rebound. Gray. Looks for help. Big, big offensive rebound. Great players make great plays at both ends. Tip in is good. Will they count it? I don't think so. I think the foul occurred before that. It's the third on Yassine Ibidi. And he, be, he now picks up his third foul. He got the tip in, but the foul had come right. before. And you know, it's nice when your big guy, your best inside player, can make free throws. And he nails that one. Gives him 19 points. Very, very confident. He's three of five at the line. He has such great hands. Miss number two. One possession game. Three-point shot will tie it. However, you don't have to get a three. And they're going to take a timeout. Reggie got the ball where he wanted. <laughs> He's going to make sure that he gets the inbounds play at the spot that he wants. I don't know if you remember, and I'm sure you do, this morning they worked on a play where they bring the big guy up to the top of the key off of a double screen. Dribble it down on one side, usually the left. 
bring the big guy up to the top of the key. I wouldn't be surprised to see them run that play here, maybe looking for Ibide, Ibide to get that three-point shot. Let's see. Well, let's see what Ibide can do because he does have one three-pointer. He had 14 points in the first half. Then he made a couple of huge baskets after being quiet most of the second half and helped keep his team right in it. So they're still very much in this game. Well, Each team has two yeah. timeouts remaining. And he's doing it against two excellent big men. And he has managed to stay away from foul trouble. Which was obviously a huge concern. The count is on. And, and again, the Panthers thought it was backcourt. Is the three. Let's there see. it is. It's going to be off target. A track down by Fields. Levance Fields starts back. We're no. in the final minute. Yeah, no rush. Pittsburgh right now will probably just run good offense. Get it into gray. Kendall with a screen. Run the clock. Use the clock. Clock is at uh, shot clock, as you see, is at 15. Huge possession. Buffalo's got to make a stop here to have a chance. Aaron Gray. No place to go. He goes low. Cook turns. And that's like a an offensive foul. Oh. Yes, sir. Good call. You could see it. Yes, it could. Good call. Of course, Jamie told him good call. I don't think he really meant it, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so either, but it was pretty obvious. Yes, it was. So now, with 26 to go, the shot clock is off. Well, I'll tell you what. You're the home team. All you, what you want to try to do is get in overtime. So UB takes a timeout with 16 to go. They have one remaining. It is a full timeout. You talk, oh, Reggie you trying to figure out something here yeah. in the last 16 seconds. And you know, the last time they had the same out of bounds from the sideline near, near half court, they had a lot of difficulty getting the ball in bounds. They're going to have to do a real good job, make sure they set some screens, get it in, and then run a play. Who do you who do you go to right now? Well, I think you got to get it into the hands of Eric Moore. And then maybe you let Andy Robinson drive. He's been good at that. We'll see what they decide okay. to do. There's the reset. It's a three-point ball game. Panthers, uh, one more foul, they'll put Buffalo in the bonus, but I don't think that matters at this no. point. There's a, each team, Pittsburgh has two timeouts, Buffalo has one, and we'll see how they decide to play it. Do you, do you try to go to a guy outside and get a three-point shot, or do you try to drive and maybe draw a foul? Well, I'll tell you what you're probably supposed to do here, which most coaches don't want to do, and it's going to be interesting to see what Jamie does. Pittsburgh right now, up three. It's one of those times in the game where you might even consider maybe fouling after the clock, after you make them use five or six or seven seconds. Foul when that shot clock's down below ten. And then it'll be a one and one for them at the line. One and one. You get it back, you're going to be up no matter what. Unless you don't rebound. Well, you're probably going to be out. Yeah, well, if they make both of them, then you're going to be fouled on the next That's right. play. And you know what? Usually, if, if once again, if you can make your free throws in those situations, then you're going to win. So, but, but most coaches will not do that. And I don't know if Jamie will either. They're on their feet. Got to watch out for fields here. Okay. Let's that's see what happens. the time that's left in the game. Moore. Here's that play. Here's that Working play. On fields goes baseline. Here's the play for the three. Here's three from no good off the mark. Rebound. Put back is good with 1.7 to go. A timeout called. That was the play they worked on this morning. The only difference is this morning in practice, he, he made them <laughs> because right. he had legs. He'd be he had the wide open three and it did not go. But good hustle by Parnell Smith. The putback makes it a one-point game with 1.7 to play. That's a good look. Oh, it is. Great look. So wide open. Oh, what a job by Parnell Smith. And I give Gamble and Smith both a lot of credit for working hard inside because they're basically outsized by the 6'10 Kendall and the 7' Aaron Gray. They really are. But, you know, once again, quickness and speed can make, can make up for size, and that's what they've done. And here you see Pittsburgh now putting in Ramon, taking out Fields. You want – oh, I'm sorry, both Fields is in. He'll inbound They it. take out Gray. I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, so you've got Fields and you've got Ramon. You probably want to get the ball into the hands of Ramon. Oh, yeah, You've also just... got uh, Antonio Graves out there. Okay. 
Although I think he's trying to decoy because he's all the way down the court. He's Somebody's got to cover him. He was trying to. He didn't want anybody to see him. That's what he was trying to do. And he's going to come forward. There's the baseball pass to Fields. He's ahead of the pack and scores at the buzzer. What a game. <laughs> what a great basketball game this was. Both teams win. I know it's tough. I, nobody wants more victories. But I'm going to tell you what. This is a game where the number two team in the country shows why they are and come back. Buffalo shows that they're going to be a contender in the MAC. And they'll be playing on bracket buster Saturday. And they'll get another chance to show everybody just how good they are. They're very, very good. A great effort. The Panthers were in dire trouble most of the game. They pull it out 70 to 67. We'll be back. Come on, kids. It's hard to find time to care for our lawn. It's easy to overlook your lawn when you lead a busy life. That's where Scott's Lawn Service can help. Hi, I'm Ashton Ritchie with the Scotts Company. Just because you don't have the time doesn't mean you can't have a great lawn. Just give Scotts Lawn Service a call. A Scotts specialist will inspect your lawn and design a program specifically suited to its needs. And we apply Scotts proven products to your lawn. With Scotts Lawn Service, you'll never again face lawn problems alone. And of course, Scotts Lawn Service is guaranteed. You don't sign any contract and you can stop the service at any time. Give Scott's Lawn Service a call. Get the convenience of a lawn service and the confidence of knowing it's Scott's. For a free no-obligation lawn analysis, call now, 800-238-1400. That's 800-238-1400. Number two in the country, pull it out 70 to 67. Mike is standing by with Jamie. Mike? Jamie, when you go into the locker room, what do you say to your kids? Oh, just great job. Just great job battle. Staying with our stuff. You know, they came out and were making shots and making plays, and they're good. You knew this would be the biggest game of the year for them, and, and our guys just stayed with our stuff, never panicked, and, and just continued to do what we did. And we did a lot of great things. And I team uh, Aaron, in the end, uh, he, he put the guards in. He said, hey, let's put the guards in for the press break, you know, so we get guys open. That's why we were able to run that play to get a guard open for that. So it's just a lot of great team stuff that really showed through. Had a great performance by them, which we knew we were going to get, and, and a great coach. Uh, it, Reggie ran a great play at the end to get a three, and you know they're just they're just very good. And, and I wish them the best of luck, Buffalo. Well, I know you do. What do you think the difference was? I mean, what 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 was it for Pittsburgh? Uh, well, you know what? I think just the confidence and believing in yourselves. I, I really think that was key, and I think that uh, really did because we knew we were going to get a, a rush at the beginning. They were going to make shots. They were going to play hard. Uh, we're playing at their place, their officials. I mean, it was just going to be that type of game, and and uh, it, was, it was good. It was good how we battled through it. Well, great win. Congratulations. And, John, back to you. All right. Thanks, guys, very much. Congratulations. They're still undefeated. He's still undefeated in the month of December. The Panthers win it 70-67. to 67. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Mike Jarvis and our entire Big East crew here, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching. See you next time.